Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folarin. Um, today, I thought we'd look at the um, Finance Act 2019, a very, very important act. And um, it looks to, 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 to laymen, it looks like, wow, there's so much that's excellent about this act. And because we're just seeing it in terms of um, you're reducing taxation, you know, you're removing regressive taxation. Uh, so what more could you want? And uh, those kind of things. But there are experts who say that, yeah, we're not going to contradict anything you're saying. But it's not as if there's not a lot more work that still needs to be done. Okay, that's my cue to um, introduce uh, two financial people. Uh, Mr. D.J. Abubutu is uh, a chartered accountant. Good morning, Mr. Abubutu, and thank morning. you very much for coming on. Good morning, Mr. Yuri. Indeed. And um, Mr. Mukta Mohammed, financial analyst. Good morning, Mr. Yuri. Friday. And Happy New Year. This is the first time I'm seeing you. Compliments. Yes. Compliments of the season, you guys. <laughs> Please, Yuri. And um, so, as I said, I, I opened my mouth and I saw all sorts of, you know, rebates. You know, now suddenly you're not going to be paying taxes, taxes on tuition, um, uh, you know, if your business now, if you're not, if it doesn't have a 25 million turnover, forget tax altogether. And even when it is over that, it's reduced. I said, ah, when it comes to tuition, nothing. I said, ah, wait till. And this, we were told, accompanied, um, that is the bill, accompanied the appropriation, uh, you know, that Mr. President submitted. So let, let, let's start from there. I, I, as I said at the beginning, I had been cautioned that, yeah, 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 you might be excited about it, but can we point out one or two things? Maybe this is where we'll be looking at that. Give me your impressions, if you will, Mukhtar, about this is, it's, it's a good day for, 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 for business. Yeah, it's a very good deal for business, um, especially and SMEs. It's a very good deal for them, especially when, you know, before you have to, whether you make profit or not, there's a fixed amount you have to, mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. to pay. Mm. And now with um, company registration, a little bit easy within 24 hours, and then you have your, your PIN also, all these things are very good coming uh, with the ease of doing business and then make, giving them this um, 25 uh, million um, bracket. And also looking at even when you make exit that again, you know, normally you're supposed to pay 30 percent night has been reduced to 20 percent that's also very very good but they, 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 all they, of these are progressive policies they are very progressive policies but the liquidity of the whole thing is that f the businessman is not going to pay tax on those things but if the ordinary nigerian is buying that product he's being taxed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you get what i'm mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. if the ordinary nigerian is buying that product he's paying a value added tax of 7.5 percent Yes, which is still the lowest in the world. Which is still the, well, it's neither here nor there because I don't like <laughs> saying that. I don't like hearing that because when you talk about the lowest in the world, you look at what are those people in the world, what other infrastructure they are. The cost of doing business is high in Nigeria. Mm. The cost of funding in Nigeria is high. Okay. The infrastructural challenges that we have, there's no power. So let's so, not do so, so that. So once you, once you put that in context, we that statement in lowest context, in the world has to be put in context. in context. But I think, by and large, I think the government have tried to look at how they could grow SME's business, especially looking at what Nigerians have been able to do, especially in the entertainment industry and other creative industry. I think it's a very good deal. And then the government came in out again and said some food items will not also be taxed, mm -hmm. which is good that they are not trying to help the ordinary ni ni Nigeria. So you will not pay on food items. Uh, but I expect them to come up to be specific about what are these school items. We will not pay tuition, we will not pay on tuition, but from primary to tertiary, and I asked myself, were, were we paying before? I don't think we're paying that before, so it's okay. not the news that we are not going to be paying that. Okay, I'm sure we'll, <laughs> so come, back, we'll come back to it in a bit more detail, but DG, your, your first impressions um, well, also. Thank you. Uh, reviewing the Act, it's a good deal, at least for Nigerians, uh, to some extent. Um, the major part that a common man will look at is the VAT increase because that's the major part that actually impacts on their lives. Now, for business, SMEs and the rest, they have a lot of benefits that the Finance Act has actually brought to bear. Now, in specific terms to investors and to um, companies, the excess dividend tax mm. is also a plus, because prior to this time, you're, being, you're having a revenue subjected to expenses. You have a profit that has been taxed, such profit has not been distributed as dividend. You retained it in your business for expansion and growth. Remember, 
prior to having profit after tax, the sale profit has already been subjected to tax. If you now come back in the future and say that amount I did not declare as dividend, I want to now declare it two, three years after. So long as that amount is higher than the profit of that particular year, you will still pay another tax on it. Okay. That, to me and to a couple of um, us professionals, does not make sense because the same amount I am paying out as dividend now, you've already, as a government, subjected it to tax okay. years back. So why are you bringing it back? That means you're not encouraging me okay. to retain money in my business for expansion and for growth. And that's why I, was not, I wasn't surprised when we have some of these multinationals, once they declare or uh, they make profit, they would declare the whole of their profit as dividend in that same year. Why are they doing that? Because if they retain that money in the business and they come back in the future to pay such amount as dividend, the government will still come back and say, based on Section 19, we are still going to subject it to tax on that excess dividend tax. It doesn't make sense. But with the Finance Act, it's perfect that that has been removed. In addition, if you have an income that, you, that has already been subjected to tax prior to that time, bringing that income into your books will escape tax. You won't pay tax on it again. The frank investment income, the, the um, uh, income you generate from rentals, mm. all that will no longer be subjected to company income tax anymore under the Finance Act, which is a good deal. Okay. Now, there was another issue on um, rates, real estate investment trust. Prior to this time, we have a major challenge with the ministry, most especially FIRS, that when you make income or when you make profit from a REIT investment, that income you made, you will subject it to tax under CIT, which is 30%. Meanwhile, under the REIT structure, 90% of that profit will go to the investors as dividend. Now, when you pay dividend, what are you going to do before paying dividend? You're going to withhold tax. So which means that you, you, you have withholding tax on the dividend you're paying out. The entity will also be subjected to tax at a rate of 30%. That was too much. And that's why rich business in Nigeria is not being attractive to investors. In other part of the world, like Singapore, Malaysia, where REITs operate effectively well, they have tax exemption. When I read through the act, it was fantastic yeah. that that has been removed. So it's a good deal. Okay. But on the VAT matter, we have to talk about it. Well, <laughs> let me bring it back to Mukta, and maybe you could talk a bit about the uh, regressive tax that government says has been removed. Um, uh, that, you know, just explain that whole area. That, 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 that problem there, um, I think, does the bill, the, 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 does, does the law sort that out now? Yes, I think so. But um, it depends. And by the <laughs> like, way, when we're talking about regressive tax, could you just briefly explain it, you know? It, it, because I think it was felt that it, it is, it is not felt, it is known that if you are taxing flat all over the place, then the guy proportionally, the low-income guy proportionally, is paying a, disadvantage, a disadvantageous rate. Is that a quo-quo layman you know, <laughs> definition of... Uh, I think he has, he has already brought that out to say that some of these areas now have been addressed, especially for companies, especially, but for individuals, that is the challenge. We've not looked at individuals. We've not looked at the, 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 the that's why you see labor will complain because the, 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 the tax labor still pay has not been reduced. So their, their salary will still be taxed the way it is taxed. And now you have increased the value added tax also on them. And also that means they are paying more tax. So it's more or less like increasing their salary in one hand, collecting it the other way around. So those are part of the thing that government- Yeah, yeah but, but this collection, the point has been made that um, it's gone up to 7.5%, mm. but 85% of that uh, will go to the, you know, uh, will, will be distributed to the states, you know, as before. Uh, they therefore have much more, well, 50% more than uh, they used to have. Uncle Yori, I said something before this tax act came into be. Tax has gone beyond what the government looking at, what the government came out with the value added tax. I think they got it all wrong because this is what we talk about. These days, we used how to use tax as an incentive to grow your economy. We have gone beyond using tax as a revenue vehicle. Now, what does the government do as far as individual is concerned? Is using tax as a revenue vehicle so that state government will be able to generate money, not to even build infrastructures, to be able to pay the minimum wage. That was the whole idea. That's why governors, governors are not complaining. 
Nobody is talking about, they are not rushing to Abuja to say um, subsidy tax have been too much on us because they now know the value added tax is being added. And again, some state government also have taxes, they tax businesses. Are they going to reduce those tax? Like I said, when we're talking, I went into an E3 on, on Sunday and I saw them that increase their value added tax to 7.5% and it's supposed to take effect from 1st of February. No, but they can't do that. So that's the... So that, they have... And, and you know there was a time when petrol stations were actually taking 50, 50 naira extra not only on petrol, top of what, Every departmental store, yes, even supermarket. Until it was stopped. Was, now, nobody's talking about that. If a company is not paying tax, the government tax thing would have pounds on that company. So if a company is now overcharging Nigerians, I think it's brought on the government to go. How did I know? When I went there and the good, the, the, the good was like 3,200, then I said 3,300. I said, ah, why? How can, mm -hmm. How can it be just now? <laughs> and I said, oh, we, we put, um, VAT is now 7.5%. I was like, ah. Have you started? Have you started? The guy actually it's, brought... It's supposed to start first of February. February. The guy actually brought a, mem a memo from his head office to show me that this is what they told us to do. I'm not permitted to call him. I'll call, mm. I'll call the name of place. Mm. This is what we are permitted to say. It's a, it's, 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 it's a very renowned eatery all over Nigeria. And I was like, ah, no. And then after that, we tried to calculate again. I said, but come to look at it. I'm even paying above 7.5%. <laughs> he now said, yes, sir. Because you pay 5% consumption tax, tax in Lagos State. In Lagos State. Absolutely. Isn't that double taxation, by so, the way? You see, you, you, you can see the body. But, but, but that is allowed within the law. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is allowed but, uh, within the law. Uh, uh, we, 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 a law covers, a, a law enables them. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay. the consumption tax, yes. Sc consumption that, tax? Yes. Now, I think the issue um, with this is the increase. If you're going to increase, from but many fight. people don't know about the consumption tax in Lagos. I ah, no, no, because it's inbuilt. It's, 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 it's inbuilt. <laughs> yeah. It's not stated separately. No. Ideally, it should have been stated. Because if you demand for your receipts, mm -hmm. you should say it there. That but, is but, a challenge. Nigeria don't demand for receipts. receipts. Nigeria exactly. don't demand for receipts. <laughs> so that's what I was saying. So in, in Lagos platform, State, <laughs> you, you consume any stuff under that uh, umbrella. Consumption tax, You pay 7.5. Then there's also another 5% that goes to Lagos State. So that now to 12 point something percent. So in Lagos State, we're paying 12.5%. Yes. That is for the tax. Remember that as a company also, Lagos State is not freeing you from your, what they call, <laughs> <laughs> television tax. <laughs> so, you, you see, the government just want to take so much from the people and give so little to them. Now, if you are going to benefit 85% from an increment, yes. you know when you look at this increment of 7.5, we are moving from 5%, that's about 50%. So ordinary that the government revenue has already gone up by 50%. Mm -hmm. Will we see the impact on the ordinary Nigerian? Will we see good roads being built? But they say the bulk of it is going back to local governments. <laughs> that is supposed to be the key institute because when it goes back to local government, remember that primary education, which is supposed to be the foundation of education, is supposed to be under the local government. Mm -hmm. So they should have money to provide more amenities for primary education. They should be able to do the local roads around your, your, your locality or where you stay. But definitely you will not see that because it won't be business as usual. That is why it's a problem. I feel that the government should have been thinking of ways to get more people into the tax bracket, especially the informal sector. The woman that is selling something in the morning that carry this and comes to and I buy. I will not pay, she doesn't charge me for consumption tax. Mm, all that for that matter. Then again, luxury items should not be charged 7.5% VAT. For okay. luxury items. Okay, so, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. So, like, uh, if you buy a Rolex watch, you say that, no, 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 no. 7.5% <laughs> is nothing. It's nothing. You know. <laughs> because that's how it's done in a developed world. The rich pay more. Did you want to yeah, add to yeah. that? Yeah, I think it's actually a matter of choice. And he has actually hit on it. If I want to eat rice and I go to Iyai Beji by the roadside, yes. I will pay the actual value for what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. But if I go to another high class eatery, a, a, a company, a registered I will company, pay the standard VAT, I will pay the consumption. consumption tax. So it's a matter. So if you don't want to pay all so that. So that begins to explain why so book, bookaterias are a lot more affordable. So yeah, it's a, no, no, it's, no, no, not, not bookateria, bookers. Bookers. So it's a matter of choice. Now, I'm not, 
an advocate for Lagos State. Mm. I'm not a staff of Lagos State. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that, as far as Lagos State is concerned, if every other state in Nigeria can effectively utilize the resources they get, as Lagos State has been doing, they will have less of noise. Okay, you did say you're not an advocate for I'm Lagos not. State. I'm not. We'll yeah. have less of noise. Because, because then, now, why are we having because, influx because of people? The, the implication of what you're saying is yes. that uh, the, the, the deployment of taxes in, mm. in Lagos State is exemplary. Well, it is. In okay. terms of utilization, mm -hmm. it is. Now, okay. well, it's not, uh, it's not perfect. Well, no, it's Mukta not, just smiled there, so I'm going to, when you finish, I'm going to go back to him. Because <laughs> Mukta just did that right <laughs> smile. Okay. But finish. It's, it is not a perfect system, however. Okay. But as, so far to this point, compared to other states, because having influx of people in Lagos means that there is a lot, whole lot going for us in Lagos State. All right, in terms of utilization. Yeah, if you say well, there are lots of leakages here and there, a lot of misappropriation here and there, well... Well, that's here, neither here nor there. All right. Now, as far as the uh, it is here and it is here and there. <laughs> no, no. Well, that's, that, that's my that's my position <laughs> because look, the, the, the infrastructure if there are having leakages. around. If the there are leakages, let, let it is the, here and there. No, no, the, the infrastructure is more or less having. like you are. If, more, if somebody is listening to you, you, see, you, you will not believe that you say you are not advocating for the But I am not. Because no, because when you look at the resources and infrastructures we have in the states. Which other state can we compare it with apart from Abuja? We have to say the facts. No, it, now, it, and the resource, it is not Lagos State that is earning so much amongst all the other states. Lagos is not the state that earns the highest when, when, when um, allocations are being distributed to states. So to that extent... It, even though they possibly could be generating the highest. Well, because of the effective utilization of the resources. Because investors will not come into Lagos if, they don't, if there are no infrastructures that have been laid out. And when you get into a state like this and you make so much money, then it's expected being business. You know, to we, pay come, back. We, we come back to the, although I know it's not a very important point mm. in this conversation, but we come back mm -hmm. to the whole point where, uh, for example, okay. you can drink any alcohol you want here if it's within the law. There are states okay. where alcohol is illegal. Okay. And they collect VAT. And they collect VAT. And they are not, they are not now, allowed to they drink it. They will take there. illegal alcohol VAT and take it up to, to, to places where. As I said, it's, that okay. might not be the okay. subject okay. for this so particular conversation. Deal with that. Say. If you don't take the regular alcohol, there are other items that you take in those states that are more stronger in terms of content than alcohol. But you don't pay that on there. That's well, it's, a about 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 it's a matter no. of choice. You see, you see, I, when it comes to <laughs> this now, issue choice. of whether Lagos State <laughs> is one of the best performing, mm -hmm. I, I, I ask myself in terms of internal generated revenue, mm. Lagos State don't even depend, should not even depend on federal. And they don't. They, 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 <laughs> but they still collect. They don't say federal keep it to yourself. <laughs> they don't say no, <laughs> right. So they it's still collect it. They do. And when you look at most of the things that we're enjoying in Lagos State, mm. has to do with federal presence. Some of those in infrastructure that you are enjoying, you see them doing. Okay, let me give an instance. Mm. From my papa, all the way, what we are, is happening now. By the time it comes out, Lagos State will take the pride of being one on that day that road. But everything is a federal road. Look at the link up roads within localities. What have Lagos State been able to do with the type of revenue? I pay land use charge, I pay all this. So let's not just go there like, <laughs> like, uh, like Uncle Yorin said. You don't say it's neither. When you look at the leakages, hmm. I keep saying we will not know how much. You know, like I told them that in the land of a blind, a one man eye is considered to be to be king. a king. Mm. So it's all about that. Oh, eh, at least they're the thief, <laughs> but they, they do something. That's I mean local palace. So because that's the, the mentality we've gotten. There are some states. There are some states that don't end up to this amount, but and they also pay their minimum wage and they'll be able to do something better. Go to a, a number of states. It might not be a perfect, but they've been able to do. They are not going <laughs> salary. They have minimum amount, and they try to build some infrastructure. Mm. Now we are seeing that being played out in Oyo State also. So it's not in the amount of money you receive. If I want to look at it, how much have you been able to? If you look at the amount of money Lagos have received, with how much they've been able to give out to us, I think they are very poor. <laughs> okay, well, okay, wait a minute. Uh, and remember, don't forget the, that Lagos <laughs> State is still the state that is highly indebted in terms when it comes to debt. Mm. That is state that is high in debt. Mm. Well, that is actually let, let, that's no, actually no, reality. No, let, us, let us look at some other things. <laughs> so, 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 okay, you, I need to deal okay. with that for oh, our oh, viewers. Oh, okay. Now, the fact that you have a high debt profile does mm. not mean it's a negative thing for the state. You're having bonds that you've raised for the purpose of investment in capital project, which is fantastic. And there's no amount of exposure that Nigeria will be exposed to 
if there are viable projects out there that is capital in nature that will add value and will improve um, the economic situation of the country, mm. they will still go out there and still borrow. So on the base of debt profile being high, mm. we should compare it with the value or the commensurate assets that is linked to those debts. Oh God, that's just a correct. Did, did, you, have, you have you have hit you, have, you came out and hit the nail towards the end. You must you must correct that because it has to do with debt. You see, that's what the government keep telling us when they keep borrowing. They keep telling Nigerians that the debt to GDP ratio is okay, but they have not looked at the debt to, to to revenue. It is of recent now the government begins to say yes, we have challenges with our revenue. So it, it, what it implies is that if there's a little shock we will not be able to pay our debts. So you must look at the... With Lagos State, yes, you could say that most of the revenue they have, they could be able to use it to offset their debt. But if they decide to offset their debt in all totality, will Lagos State still be debt-free based on revenue to debt? That is, that's the topic for that day. Let, 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 okay. <laughs> let, let's look at the Financial Act 2019 and what it does for agriculture. Um, um, well, even before then, I wanted to go to some other thing that... Um, that manufacturers have always complained about that you're killing us softly. No, in fact, it's not even softly again. You're killing us anyhow because with the point being made that it's the, the cost of production here is very unfavorable, you know, and the taxes, the excise taxes that they have to pay and all of that and all of that uh, to imported goods. Um, has the Financial Finance Act 2019 has it dealt with that? I'm, re I'm reading something about. Um, uh, what, what, they shall also be imported goods shall also be subject to excise, you know, rates, you know, as any local, you know, manufacturer or producer. Explain that, if you will. Mm. All right. And how mm. how how that actually now, well, would have the, addressed the situation. The, the finance act basically speaks to the manufacturing sector. Mm. They all are trying to give them um, opportunities to expand to do more. Right, and um, if you look at it, some of the structures that have been laid out for SMEs, if you're into manufacturing, there are a lot of exemptions you get, there are a lot of waivers you get. All right, now, but that is not enough in my, in my own view because um, if I'm into manufacturing and it takes a longer period to get my product from the point of manufacturing to the final destination, that is not too good for business. If I have challenges with power, that is not good for business. So the, the, the development goals that have been set have been issued to, that will address power should be focused on. Power infrastructures, resource, uh, the, 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 all the capital assets that we're looking at that will enable businesses to thrive, all those has to be focused on. Because if you don't do that, it, no matter how much waiver you give to me on the tax part, I'm still gonna lose it at the other end. Mm. I'm going to lose. So it's just coming in and going out. You're telling me that you're giving me waivers, you're giving me reduction in taxes, and at the end of the day, my overhead is increasing. So the profit that I should retain, that I should distribute to the investors in that line of business, has all been eroded. Why? Because there are no effective resources or infrastructures in place to ease my business. So I think a whole lot still have to be done in, in addition to. And, and this the brings me to something Mukta and I were saying, we were speaking about before coming on air, and uh, that is. How does this, after praising the, you know, Finance Act 2019, how does it affect the ordinary guy? And to, speaking about power now, mm. as you know, there's going to be an increase in, you know, the, the power rate very, very shortly. <laughs> uh, so we're now going to 7.5%. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the ordinary man, whether he likes it or not, still has to have power. So he's going to be paying more, more for, for power. power. And this is additional stress. Yeah. You know, not just more as you, it's almost like double more. You pay more, more that, uh, and the people, uh, those people said they're, they're, they're going to increase it anyhow. Uh, so I'm sure government, what do you think this is all about? Because um, the I whole idea the was to make it easier it, on the ordinary person. I think when it comes to power, the government, whichever government have not gotten it right yet. Because the power companies, whether the Jinkos, the Discos, whatever, they, they seem to be having a field day. Because when you look at it, Government is, not, government is not ready to give tax bracket in that area. Because all these people have made government to feel that they are not making money, that's why they've not been able to invest. And we've been hearing this, this for, since the day they bought these companies. And government, even government money has been given to these companies through CBN loans and everything, even some banks also, yet we are still where we are. For me, if you really want to help the ordinary Nigeria, then you begin to look at can we say 
will, will, will we have that tax bracket in, in VAT in power? If it comes now, they, they say they're going to increase it. They are going to be going around the nation. There will be a certain uh, a town hall meeting before they finally make the number. The, um, even if people already know that they say this is the amount, the percentage they want to increase, but they are still making us believe that, okay, maybe when we talk, we'll bring down those amounts. I think the government should really look at it and see what incentive can we give to Nigeria. Because even the power companies have been given incentives in terms of tax bracket in some other uh, uh, during bringing up of their power uh, equipment to Nigeria. So why should the ordinary Nigeria not enjoy such facility mm. if I'm going to be paying my bill? Mm -hmm. Why should I still pay a value added tax of 7.5% mm -hmm. from my 5% mm -hmm. and I have an increment of 50% in my, maybe increase my, 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 my electricity bill by 50% and then I have to pay a value added tax that will be increased by 50%. So you see, it's really going to be huge on the ordinary Nigeria. Because that way, that's what I said in the introduction. The bills look very, very good for companies, for SMEs. But how many Nigerians are in, that owns companies that run SMEs? Most Nigerians, ordinary Nigerians are. But, but, but how about the theory that, look, let the small mom and pops kind of businesses, you know, if you have so many of them, yafu yafu, up and down the land, mm. it'll have this whole, uh, you know, Ms. positive. Mr. Did you say something? He said, if the cost because those doing, ones won't pay anything. If the cost of doing business yes. is high, the cost of doing business doesn't have to do with the ease of doing business. Okay. The cost of doing business have to do with, with how much does it cost me to borrow funds if I have to expand. Let me come back so you can continue. I've got to go on a break now. Come back. We'll continue that. I'm sure DJ also wants to add um, something to it. Uh, stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Mrs. Deji Awobutu and Mukta Mohammed um, helping us understand the Financial um, Act of 2019. And whereas there's a lot uh, that is commendable about it, um, they're also pointing out that, however, there still are other areas. Maybe there are some wrinkles, but those can possibly be ironed out. And um, let, let me just, because we don't have all the time, because I know you gentlemen could spend the next three hours if you had it and would barely scratch the surface. It always happens like that. Matters of finance and matters of law are like that. Now, the point has been made that if we were a lot more efficient in our tax collection, that is to say, uh, the, it's thought that too many people that should be within the tax net are not in the net. The mesh is so wide that people can slip through. Um, and so, continuing this analogy, if the mm. mesh could be finer, mm. uh, so that many more people that mm. should be in the net in the first case mm. uh, would, would be in there, mm. then a lot of these problems would disappear because we wouldn't even have the problem now of increase. I think Muta made that point mm. earlier. Mm. We wouldn't have the challenge of increasing because we'd get a lot more money mm. simply. So, tax evasion. Mm. Has this, does this do anything about tax evasion? Well, as far as um, the Finance Act is concerned, I think that a part of it or a section of it that actually address that. Um, right now, as an individual, you will not be able to operate your bank account or you will not be able to open an account with a financial institution in Nigeria if you don't have a tax ID. Okay, okay. So, uh -huh. now the question now is, what bracket of the people out there are doing banking business? Uh, well, this is, because uh, uh, stay on that point, please. It's okay. a very tiny one. Okay. And um, I think you, both you and Mukta <laughs> had mentioned the point that, um, look, if you're a company and I choose to go and eat in your eatery because it's a company, yeah. so, 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 so. If, however, it is a booker, Correct. these are not formal. So the booker person, they make stupendous money too. Absolutely. But how... You say they, if you don't have a tax you know, okay. ID, so, you, you, you won't be able to open a bank account. Exactly. Certainly those people need bank accounts. Exactly, because if you're collecting huge amounts on a daily basis, mm -hmm. keeping them, you have a whole lot of risk keeping those monies without banking them. Which I'm sure they don't do. 
Well, I think th 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 it's all about um, okay. awareness. Okay. Awareness and the importance of doing banking business. Now, if you don't get involved in the banking transactions, then the, there will be limit to the kind of transactions you'll be able to do. Yeah. All yeah. right. Now, and uh, the, the, there will also be limit to the kind of people that will patronize you. Okay. Because in terms of volume of cash, there is restriction. All right. So we're just using the food seller as exactly, an example. As an example. That's you correct. know, as an example. And, and looking at looking at C CBN structures now mm -hmm. going um, cashless. Well, it's still something we still have to continue to create more awareness. So the more awareness we create for people to embrace the banking business or the banking transaction mm -hmm. or process, mm -hmm. the more people that will get into the tax net. Except they have the original intention of invading tax abolition. Oh, okay. I'm going to come to you, Mukta, but mm -hmm. in the first instance, let me go to Mr. George. Good morning, Mr. George, calling in from Ikeja. Good morning, Uncle Yari. Good morning. Thank you for calling in. Greetings to the experts there. Yeah. Thank you. Uncle Yari, I tend to align with uh, Mukta in his argument. I never knew that uh, Lagos State was collecting what they call consumption, consumption tax. tax. Again, <laughs> on top of that. How, do, do, don't I have the right to eat? If I go to an eatery, I buy food, I pay for the food. Then I pay tax to Lagos State government for eating the food. It doesn't make sense to me. I think you also do the same with your petrol, when you buy petrol in your car. Yeah, so, and then these things are hidden. They are not, they are not pronounced. Even if anybody wants to challenge it, they give you uh, the receipt. You will not see it on the receipt. That is not uh, right. As much as the components of this uh, new law is good for business, I want to say that it is only people who are in the business bracket of 10 million upwards that can be that can open a firm or set up a firm that can benefit from that. But the vast majority of Nigerians, over 90 percent of other Nigerians, are not within that bracket of 25 million. Yes, they are not there. There are many people who have. A 25 or 10 million naira business that they own. And Uncle Yore, let me tell you something. A few weeks ago, I went to Computer Village to fix a phone. And you know, those girls that stand along the road selling little, little things along the road, not even main shops, one of them told me that she pays tax of 1,200 naira to Liberty government every day. I say, are you sure it's the legal state government? She said, yes, that the people who come there to collect are from the, 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 the state officials, follow them there. What I'm trying to say is that the book are you are saying they do not, they are not within the tax bracket. Legal state government has a way of collecting tax from them. Do you know how much they pay to their various local government councils? <coughs> Which they are made to believe that it is uh, to the government. That is one thing. I think. We need to be transparent in our tax system. If you want to collect tax, let me know that I am paying. And I should have the right to say yes or no to mm. it. Mm. This is just my but, uh, but, but, but But generally, Mr. George, uh, yes. it, it, it's a positive. Uh, this 2019, Finance Act 2019, it, it, it's, it's, do you agree that agree. it's a positive, it positive direction? But it should not be sectionalized. Let's take it a little further. Okay. Because the people, the real Nigerians, are among those 90% I spoke about. I mean, if, if, you, if you have a business for 25 million naira, you cannot claim to be a poor man. But Turn over. Of are poor. <laughs> <laughs> Turn over. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for calling in, Mr. George. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. You were going to yes. come in on the point yeah, that Like he was made. saying about having the pin and... Um, yeah, that, that, that um, tax uh, ID. A, a that tax they, ID. They, they, yes, a tax ID. That once that, you have it, mm. then you must open an account with it, and um, nobody wants to do. Let me tell you something. If you want to know how much Nigeria handle cash, mm. you just need to go to meet most of all these petty. Let me tell you. Just give you an instant. Go and buy when you want to buy malu or cow with those guys. They don't collect. They don't collect your bank. They want their cash. They don't carry uh, uh, POS terminal. POS terminal. They want their cash. So what we are saying is that if you are saying individual account, now remember, it's not in the place. That's why I say this law favors the government, the state government, than even the federal government. It's not in the place. I'm best resident in Lagos. I pay my, my personal income tax to Lagos state government. 
I don't pay. The one the, gov the federal government collect is the company income tax. So even by creating that law that you must open with a pin, mm. we, 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 we stopped with the banking sector now. He brings about this idea of capturing the unbankable. Okay. So if you don't capture the unbankable and they now know that if I have a pin, government will be monitoring my account, how will you capture them? Mm. Hmm. Bank have come out with a lot of policies. The tax identification number. Yes, so that's bank have come out with a lot of policies. Zero account opening. Uh, I was going to go there. Phone. The so bank are doing their best to encourage, encourage people. people to come, and that is why even before they came, the 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 the, 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 the financial bill came in to so say, okay, you will no more pay stamp duty charge on fifteen naira. The banking committee has gone ahead to say that even in your in your in your um in your savings account, mm -hmm. instead of collecting a stamp duty charge of 50, 50 naira every month, will now collect it quarterly. So they are trying to encourage people to open account because the challenge... And that has even got better. The, yes, the, the, cha the challenge has CBN has is CBN has the challenge of knowing how to tackle inflation because inflation tackle will be easy when they know the amount of cash that is in the system so they can mop up. Mm. That's why they are trying... So that's why we say the physical policy... Mm -hmm. And the and the uh, and, and the monetary policy, we need to come together when it comes to issue. We don't know the the input of CBN in this financial bill. Okay, one moment, please. Uh, Mazi Okora for Inaro Chuku. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yuri. Good morning, Mr. Deji. Good morning, Mr. Wotara. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Oh, that's to say, financial problem in Nigeria is solvable. That is to say, states should concentrate more or the natural resources where they have competitive advantage. If they do that, no more excess tax on individuals. You know, there are civil servants today, they collect maybe 200,000 or 100,000 and above. You see, at that tax, they will get, the government will give them up to 20 or 30,000 naira. Now, how much is left? Now, Nigeria must continue evading tax because in the society we have as them now, people will ask you now, after all, those who pay tax, what have the government done about it? Look at some of the roads some governors say they built in their states. How I many? Go around and check now. Not up to 50% of them is, is, is more terrible now. And it has not lasted up to four years or five years or six or seven years. That is a problem. Because the quality jobs are not being done there. The taxpayers, they want this now. Now, let me, I think we all saw what's happening in America now, where the, 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 this uh, economy, a uh, world economic uh, forum. What's it? Trump told the whole world that in America, they have the best water in the whole world. That in America, they have the best oxygen. Now, we come back home, Nigeria. Do we say that we have the best road or the best water? Or the best? Yeah, it's because water that is supposed to be everywhere. Do you know there's some area now that is just going on? And so people can't even see water. Now, you ask yourself, what is happening? Is it that the people should continue building their boroughs on there? Which is not possible because... There's no borrow that is 50,000 naira or 100,000 naira. If you want to talk about quality borrow, you should talk about 400 or 300,000 naira. How many people can afford it? And even the people that have the borrow, they are selling the water. There's mm. no place to get the water is free. So these are the things that we should sit down and do what now. We are putting everything outside, 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 outside from Nigeria. When we come back with them. Now, if you come down to Chikuda, from a hot year, since after the Civil War, the road is still like that. You talk, look at the, the Badalego road, they are building it. How many years will it take? Can the company do so the night and do the road at least make it at least within one month or two more they finish it every day the same road they will give budget is so terrible Nigeria let us face reality or tax it's not a question of tax God bless Nigeria have a pleasant day thank in you. thank you thank you very much uh, but, but uh, well, you know I don't know uh, I, I think Legosians will testify that uh, well um, for some reason since uh, Governor Sanwolu uh, when he declared an emergency on roads, there are some areas that have been perpetually unhappy. Suddenly, traffic is moving in those areas, and yes, li too. life has improved. I was, I was part life of the people that I was, wow. I was out there um, <laughs> saying I, the government. Let, let me say, I don't, I don't <laughs> work for Lagos State Government. No, no, no. Okay. I'm not okay. an advocate okay. for Lagos State Government. You see, you but see, I, I, now I want to come to me and try to praise Lagos State Government. I saw the road along, some of the roads along yes. my area. The so so they, 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 Take they, stadium in, in Agege. In, in, Take that road in stadium no, in Agege. I mean, that, that was impossible. That, was, that one is even good. I mean, I'm talking about take the road from, um, from um, Maryland through the shopping mall, mm. like a link road to Antony. 
the Bush Street, mm. that road has now is more or less like an express. Okay, mm. so that is just relating to Mars. So that's, that, uh, that how long not, will it? Mm. That there are some of them that are trying. Trying. Uh, but both of us are saying that we don't work for Lagos State. Oh. No, I don't <laughs> work for Lagos State. <laughs> and you're not an advocate for Lagos State. I will never be an advocate. But, but when you see truth, truth you, you will say, talk no, no, truth. No, no, you say truth. You know, Judge mentioned something earlier when he made the call. They need to make that clearance. Sure. Now, if you go to an entry and they charge you taxes. It is legal that what they are, what the taxes you are paying should be expressly stated Tated. on your receipt. Mm. Create mm. a scene, make an issue there. If mm -hmm. I'm paying anything extra than what I have paid for, what am I paying? What is that extra thing I'm paying for? Well, I, 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 but what? But, so but it I wonder has to be why stated. it is it is embedded. <laughs> I would look. I would like to use the word that hidden. Was, that was, that was give room for corruption. Doesn't make mm. sense. That will give room for corruption because if it is not embedded in my receipt. How do Lagos State government go about collecting it to know how much so, consumption taxes have so been? So accountability becomes an accountability issue. Accountability becomes That's an it. issue. Uh, Mr. Joshua and Ire Walide, good morning, sir. Good morning. How mm. are you, sir? Thank you for calling in. Uh, and I greet your guest. Sure. I think the Finance Act 2019 is taking a bold step to addressing the uh, punitive nature of the tax system we have had we've been operating in nigeria the punitive na think, punitive nature yes okay our, our tax system is punitive okay. it's not tied to development okay. it's just like you want to export money from the people like uh, okora for said i dig my borehole i provide my security for myself I provide everything, and everywhere I go in Nigeria, you see this invisible tax system is what is killing us. Every receipt, uh, this one, uh, stamp duty, uh, this one, VAT, your food, every supermarket, everywhere, we are paying tax everywhere. And the amount of money that government receives through those invisible taxation is huge. It's just because we neglect when five naira accumulates to one billion and all that. We know that our government is receiving money. How can that money be translated to development? How can we tie tax to development? How can I see my road? How can I see water? How can I feel the presence of government? We emphasize too much about what we pay or what is not being paid. But the problem is there's no development whether the payment is small or big. Then, uh, please, I want your, your guests to address the problem of uh, uh, this, this, this problem of looking at debt. You know, we talk about whether debt ratio uh, to uh, revenue or whatever. I, I'm asking, is it not better to look at our debt from the point of the actual infrastructure government is providing? If we are providing a rail system that is commercially driven, that means the money borrowed is tied to a business venture, which will be recouped back. So shouldn't we focus on that? Then when you go and borrow money and it goes into private pockets, that's mm. what I think is the problem. Okay. When the money disappears, not whether it is borrowed or not, but what do we use the money for when it is borrowed? All right, then. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Joshua. All right. I think uh, to respond to what Mr. Joshua said, the last comment on the debt mm. is very extremely important. Now, let's look at the process. A state governor cannot approach the capital market without the approval of the State House of Assembly. So, which implies that the Assembly would have approved, that, okay, fine, as a governor, go ahead to raise that huge amount of debt you want to raise. Now, when you leave that stage, you will approach a capital market because government bonds, you need investors to come in to invest. Now, approaching the capital market, we have the regulator there, SEC, Security and Exchange Commission. Now, part of the pertinent question they are going to ask you is the purpose for requesting or requesting to raise that bond. If the purpose, if they are not convinced with that purpose, approval will not be given. Mm -hmm. And once they are convinced to the point that they're given approval, they will also be involved in the monitoring process. So it is now up to SEC and up to the House of Assembly to be sure of what the governor is actually doing or what he intends to do with the money he intends to raise. So if that money, based on what um, he said, mm. if it's tied to a project that is self-financing, mm -hmm. 
What you are raising money for is to kickstart, to get the project, to get the infrastructure on ground. And you know that the repayment of that will not be from any other part other from that project itself. Now, there are some that may not be self-financing projects, but they will ease business. Okay. When you construct roads that you didn't attach a toll to. So the point you're making is that yes. these bonds, when they are raised, yes. will be tied to a specific project Projects. and will be monitored yes, as because such. I don't expect the House of Assembly to approve borrowing for a recurrent expenditure. How I, I, you see, I'd like to get Mukta, but Ehis in Magodo mm. has called in. Good morning, Mr. Ehis. Oh, I lost him. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> Mukta. Mr. Ehis, sometimes you talk like if you are not in this country. <laughs> Because we have seen the, the ideal AFCC, thing that should be. The ideal. The thank ideal. You, that's, thank you. That's you the ideal, the ideal thing. Be. But we know that the state House of Assemblies has mm. become a second, uh, a, 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 governor, a governor's tool. Oh, dear. Yeah, it is. It is. That's why they are, not, they are not fighting for their independent. Now, let's leave that. When you're talking about issues where the capital market, the state of assembly approved, mm. we've had issues that EFCC is investigating former governors for eating money that was collected from the capital market for projects that were not done. That's abnormal case. No, it's but not abnormal. No, it, it is abnormal because you cannot raise money and put it in your private pocket. But it has happened. Well, it has happened. That, that becomes, the fact that it happened does not make that is the norm. That's not well, the norms, but, but... But, you know, out of every hundred, we can have a uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, uh, okay. you okay. know, skirmishes here yeah. and there. So uh, the fact that it's happening does not mean the right thing should not be done. Now, if it happened with this administration, that yeah. was going to be the next administration will do it. And okay. that's why it goes back to the people. So you're the, saying that the concern that uh, Mr. Joshua raised, yes. that, you know, whereas you're not saying it doesn't exist, it, it's, it's, hardly it's hardly a problem. It's not, it's not at the proportion where it has become a problem mm. because, because of all these checks that you have uh, explained. Yeah, and effectively following the checks and putting control measures in place. But the unfortunate part is the money is already in your custody mm. as a governor. Mm. The monitoring process comes after utilization. SEC no. will not tell you, okay, this is what you said you're going to do. Before you spend the money, come to us and get approval. They won't say that. I, and I that goes you. back to the people. Okay. I, I, don't, want, I, I, I don't want to lose Kunle. I don't want to lose Kunle okay. in a bad one. Good morning, Kunle. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for calling in. Go ahead, please. Well done, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Greetings to your guest, sir. Thank okay, you. sir. Uh -huh. Please, I want you to understand this, my speech than the way I we made the uh, speech, sir. I want you to understand me better, sir. Now, in terms of uh, collecting um, uh, tax from the members of the public, sir, that is from the government, sir, um, on the radio, one man used to come from America, that the way we collect tax in Nigeria, so when we are complaining that there is no road, there is no hospital, there is no water, the man used to say that uh, in America, only for people, uh, uh, when, they remit, when they pay tax in the U.S., that is enough for the development. That, that is, it is the, the rich that used to pay for the poor. But in Nigeria, it is the poor that used to pay for the rich. So truly, if they want, want to make a, a work of AFCC, to be more uh, easier. <laughs> EFCC care. If you want to build a house, the moment the EFCC discovered that the house you are building is up to 5 million naira. Yes. So the amount you should pay on that money should be the same 5 million naira. So from there, it will be difficult for anybody to invest your money to go and build a house or to go and buy a car of 20 million naira. When uh -huh. you know that when you buy the bathroom for 20 million naira, you pay another 20, 20 million naira of tax. So what do you think about that, sir? Uh, okay, thank you very much for calling in, Mr. Kunle in Badon. I mean, we need to we need to get some of this thing clear. Is um, remember when the, the current American president came in? The 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 the, the, the Trump Trump and most of the America say he came in to help the businessmen. Mm. He gave tax bracket. Mm. He gave this. So when it comes to tax, remember when you own a business, when you're a rich man, there's always consultants, loopholes, loopholes here too. To so sometimes you think, oh, the rich are paying so much in tax, but at the end of the day, you realize that because they own businesses, they some of them breaks. put they have all those deductions. things into their businesses mm. and do the tax reduction. But I get what he's saying. Like, there are other ways, like in the UK. Yeah, but, but, sorry, sir, the regressive tax elimination is not, it doesn't extend to this particular aspect of the conversation? It does. Uh -huh. So, let me give it, like in the UK, you want to pay tax if... 
I mean, if you want to pay fine, they now use it in fine. If you have, want to pay a fine, you parked a, um, a, 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 a Range Rover spot mm -hmm. in a spot, mm -hmm. and the t you park it in the wrong spot, mm -hmm. and the guys are coming to give you ticket. Mm -hmm. And I park a Toyota Camry on the same spot. Mm -hmm. The amount of ticket we are going to pay is going to be different. Interesting. I, I see. Yonder. Yes. Yeah. But, okay. Yes, okay. because you, okay. you, are, you are assumed so that's, to be very rich. There's a proportional rich. something yes, going your car, on there. Your, the rate of your car, the cost of your car is high. Where, where does that happen? Where? In the UK. Oh, in the UK. Yeah. But but here, if you like, pack <laughs> pack pack any so <laughs> pack, pack even Marwa in the wrong so, place. If you're and not again, you want to buy a car like it, the man was trying to say, if you want to, if you ride a Rolls Royce car, it's different. The tax that you pay on that Rolls Royce is different from somebody that is driving. On, so on so Kunle, Kunle has a point there. He has a point. Um, uh, Ehiz is back in uh, Magodo. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Yari. Thank uh, you for morning coming to in. your guest. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yari, what I just want to contribute on this particular uh, issue is that we have a problem where people care less about issues of taxation and what is being done with the tax. And I want to also agree that if Nigerians are seriously taxed to a particular extent, they will be interested in what is done with that money. And at the same time, Kule said something. We have a problem in our tax collections in Nigeria. He said something that is crucial. Where the poor are the ones paying for the rich. Mr. Yori, can you explain a situation where a man will go and buy 20 cars and lock them inside the compound? He can only drive one. If you are taxed by the numbers of cars you have, these rich individuals who buy cars, who get the key inside their compounds without driving them, will not buy them. These monies will be used to invest for investments that will reach the life of the people. Okay. And if, just like you said, when the man builds a house that is over 100 million, let's even forget about the 5 million he's talking about. Mm. And you are going to collect, uh, what is it called, this uh, land revenue, whatever. Uh, you are rate. collecting the same amount you are collecting from a man who built a house of 100 million, from yeah. the same person who built a house of 10 million. Is that not funny? Mm. Tax people according to what <laughs> they and what they want. That's the way it should be. And once you do that, the rich, the rich in the society, who are not interested in a lot of things, will be interested in what happened with that tax, that tax money. Take, for example, if you are increasing for a fair price now, you see even both the rich, the poor, everybody shouting. Who cares if Kerosene is one millionaire? Hmm. These are the issues. Yeah. Thank you Good very morning. much for calling in, you know, uh, uh, Kunle. No, no, is, is that Kunle? Ehis. Yes. Ehis. No, that's Ehis. Ehis. Uh, Mr. Ehis in Magodo. Thank you very much. In fact, you know, we've really, ah, we've really used up all our time. <laughs> all that's left is for me to thank you, gentlemen, for your insights and also, you know, just helping us to understand this thing. Please, one thing I want, Nigerians should start asking for receipts. <laughs> when you buy something, ask for receipts. Okay. So that you, and I mean, you say you're paying tax. Say, I want to see the tax. Especially if you are eating in eateries or anywhere. Ask. We need to begin to take own ownership of our, our of, of of our economy so we can now face lagos state government and say no, no lagos state where, government where, is where, where is that why why do you make it invisible <laughs> no as just, that was just a joke uh mr dijawubutu <laughs> thank you very much uh, chartered accountant and uh, mr Mukhtar mohammed you know uh, also chartered accountant but we he's a financial <laughs> analyst uh, thank you very much gentlemen for coming on the program oh, a pleasure. Thank All right, you. Then. Thank so you. that's our program uh,